A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and, putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earthquake, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Greetings, everyone. My name is Keith Condrich, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm a deacon here in the Diocese of Pittsburgh, and I'm assigned to the Allegheny County Jail as a chaplain. And I'm so humbled and so grateful to be with you today as we enter into Holy Week. Starting yesterday with Palm Sunday, the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, recognizing Jesus as our King, although maybe not the kind of King that we were all expecting. Definitely not the kind of King that the Israelites were expecting, but we'll get to that. So yesterday, Palm Sunday, and then leading into Holy Week, Holy Thursday, and Good Friday later on this week. There's a little game that I like to play with the young children at my church, and I try to teach them about how much God loves them. And so I'll start out by asking them a question. I'll say, how much does God love you? How much does God love you? Does God love you this much? And all the children say, no, no. And I'll ask, does God love you this much? And the children say, no, no, no. I'll ask a third time, does God love you this much? And of course, they're into it by now. No, no, deacon, no. And finally, I say, does God love you this much? This much. And of course, they all shout, yes, yes. God loves us this much. God loves us. So much, I tell the children. He loves you that much, so much that he died for you. He died for you. He died for all of us. The story of the cross is the greatest love story ever told. So that section of the passion narrative that I shared from Matthew's gospel tells us that as Jesus died, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. And I'm sure, you know, that's a line that's familiar to most of you, especially this time of year. We hear it often in the Passion narratives. It's one of those lines that we kind of take for granted. But did you ever wonder, what does that really mean? The veil in the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. What is the significance of that? Why did the gospel writers think they needed to include that? Well, you see, in ancient Israel... The most sacred space, the most sacred site, was the Holy of Holies. And that was a special place in the temple in which the Israelites believed that God dwelt, where God's presence appeared. It was where the Ark of the Covenant, you know, that special container that held the Ten Commandments, that's where the Ark was kept. So the Holy of Holies was this inner sanctuary, this very special, sacred place. 
and it was protected. It was hidden by a veil, okay? And a veil was a very large, ornate type curtain, okay? Imagine a veil covering a large opening into this part of the temple. And no one was allowed into the Holy of Holies except the high priest. And even then, he could only enter once a year on the Day of Atonement. And he would offer sacrifice and prayers before God. And so, in essence, this curtain, this veil, separated the people of God. They couldn't see what was going on inside there. God was hidden away. God was untouchable. There was a physical barrier between God and his people. And then, on Good Friday... As Jesus lays down his life for the world, as Jesus lays down his life for you and I, that curtain, that veil is torn away. And now we can see inside the Holy of Holies. And what do we see there? What do we see there? The heart of God. We see a heart that's filled with compassion. We see a heart that's filled with love we see a heart that's filled with forgiveness. Compassion and love and forgiveness beyond our wildest imaginations. In his letter to the Hebrews, St. Paul reminds us that we don't have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with us, who is unable to recognize and understand our weaknesses. We have a high priest, we have a king who's been tested in every way, yet without sin. We are no longer separated from God. Think about Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. All the expectations that were there. You know, it's kind of like if you watch the news and watch the coverage of the royal family in England, right? All this pomp and circumstance. And yet our expectations, the expectations of the people that day, were kind of shattered because our king didn't come to be served, but to serve. And we see that transition into Holy Thursday, right? How many kings do you know go out? Can you imagine the, the king and queen of England going out and washing the feet of their subjects? Usually it's the subjects who wash the king's feet. Usually it's the subjects who die for the king. The king sends out his armies and they die for the king. In this case, our king dies for us. Unheard of in the history of the world. We are no longer separated from God. Despite our weaknesses, despite our sinfulness, despite our brokenness as people, there's nothing. Nothing that we can do to separate ourselves from the love of God. And so through this cross... God says, you can do this to me. You can do this to me. You can reject me. You can deny me. You can scorn me. You can spit on me. Torture me. You can kill me. And I will still love you. God's love for his people, God's love for you, is fully revealed in his son's death on the cross. The unconditional love of God is what Good Friday is all about, my friends. That's why we call it Good Friday, not Black Friday. The cross has driven away the darkness. Light has triumphed. At the end of our service today, you're going to see the image of the cross. And as you look upon that cross, as you focus on that cross in the silence of your heart, I want you to bring whatever veil, whatever curtain is separating you, you personally, from the love of God. I want you to bring that curtain to your prayer. Maybe it's the veil of fear. Maybe it's the veil of anger. Maybe it's the veil of pride or jealousy or selfishness. Maybe it's the veil of doubt. Maybe it's the veil of past hurts. But whatever it is, whatever veil is separating you right now from experiencing the love of God, I want you to lay that veil before the cross. 
And I want you to know, to know in your heart that Jesus has torn that veil apart. He shredded it. There's no longer any barrier between you and the unlimited love of God. It's gone. You can let go of that veil today. Let go of your fear. Let go of your anger, your pride, your doubt. That veil no longer exists. How much does God love you? Does he love you this much? No. Does he love you this much? Nope. Does he love you this much? No. God loves you this much. God bless you.